Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. So many fun things to discuss, hot topics by weekend, what other people were doing, what other holiday parties were going on in Hollywood and Beverly Hills. But first, I want to tell you about something very exciting that happened to me. Um, Peter and I were invited to an event. And at the event, the host was a gay man. And there are lots of people there and we're having lots of fun and meeting new people. And it's a small kind of intimate gathering. And what was exciting is Peter finally went shopping and he's gotten some new clothes. He had like a collared shirt that, that you know, had like an inside print on the inside. He had a blazer. He looked good. And this woman goes, Peter comes back. Because when we go to parties, we don't really hang out that much. We talk to different people and then come together throughout the night. And Peter comes up to me and the new friend that I have says, oh, how long have you guys been friends? To Peter and I. And so I said, oh, 23 years laughing. And I'm like, haha. And then I said, no, actually, he's my husband. And she goes, what, he is? And I go, yeah. And she goes, oh, my God, I thought he was the host's husband. She thought he was in a married gay relationship. And I never was more excited to hear that, more proudful. I mean, that's told me. Never in 23 years was Peter dressed well enough to be taken for a gay man until recently. And I'm just putting it out there for some of you ladies that try to get your man a little more stylish and encourage them to spend a few dollars at a Nordstrom or whatever. And they fight you on it and they fight you on it. And you're like, whatever. This is just, this is the best I can do. It's not worth it. And then one day it all comes together and you realize, my God. He finally has a little bit of style. So I was thrilled. Very fun. We've been going to a lot of events and things like that that have been fun. I was in La Quinta this weekend with my one of my oldest girlfriends. And she is my friend that I've talked about many times, who when I got my first job out of college, working at Robinson's May department store before it was taken over by Macy's as an buyer, and I was awful at it, um, she threw down this Learning Annex magazine about how to be a stand-up. And she's like, you need to take this class and this is what you should be doing. So anyway, she's a great friend of mine. We had a really fun weekend and um, had drinks with Angie K, the new girl from Salt Lake City, fresh off the reunion. Um, so that reunion of Real House of Salt Lake City is going to be very juicy. A lot of things are going to come out about the new girl, Monica. You may have been hearing some rumblings who she was, what her look like was before she came on the show, the obviously the affair with the brother-in-law, the lawsuit with Beauty Lab, everything will be discussed and revealed and probably some things that won't. So excited for that one. Had fun getting to know her. And then, um, and then I went to an open house that was in the neighborhood with my girlfriend and Gina from Real House with the OC was the broker of a former um, OC housewife's home, which she's selling, which she is very expensive, but it's a big, huge property. And that was kind of not too far from like where Coachella is and everything. Anyway, so went to see her, went to, so, you know, it's always fun to go crash an open house when you're not in the market. And that's what we like to do. I like to look at open houses and talk to realtors and then leave with a free water. Don't miss your chance to get away this season. Fill your sleigh with gifts from Way. Way's best-selling hair and body products are the best gifts for effortless routines. Perfect for you and everyone on your list. You know I love their hair oil. I also love their detox shampoo. Everybody needs it. Let's start the year off with healthy hair. Don't miss a chance to get away this holiday season. Go to theway.com for 15% off site-wide when you enter the promo code JUICY. That's T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com for 15% off with code JUICY. 
Unwrap the first of many presents this season with Holidays on the House from DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up for promo code JUICYSCOOP and play $5 to get $100 in casino credit. That's promo code JUICYSCOOP only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www1800 Gambler.net in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsible. 21 and above. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. One per opted in new customer. $5 wager required. Max 100 in casino credit awarded, which will require one time playthrough within seven days. Terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house. Restrictions apply. So then I realized I have this pink jacket that's a similar cut, not the same pink, that Denise Richards wore in the last episode that everybody is talking about on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She was intoxicated with something. We don't know if it was the weed dinner, alcohol consumed before, maybe a muscle relaxer. I don't know. I don't know. But she has this moment where she's talking to Erica Jane And she's like, you know, you know what you did. You know what you did. And you were nice to me. And then you weren't. And Erica Jane is like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. We're grown ass adults. You know. And finally, Erica Jane still doesn't know and just says, well, if that's what happened, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. She says, thank you. You're welcome herself. Then she proceeds. The night continues and she puts on her jacket, which is this fluffy jacket like I have here. And she was wearing it like upside down. And it was such a brilliant comedic moment. Props to the editors and props to Dorit that I really think was trying to just be a nice friend. And she goes, "Um, I think your, your jacket is upside down. What? I know what you're doing. Don't. No, I mean, is that is that a new style, mind you? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Don't do this. Don't do this. I know what you're doing. Don't do it. No, I'm I'm really saying it's I I really Denise, I think you're wearing your jacket upside down. It's stop it. And then they like show when she first arrived what it looked like from the back. And yes, yeah, she put it upside down, meaning the collar was like in the middle of her back and the but they're kind of this fluffy jacket. Anyway. Everyone was talking about it. It was very, very funny. And then we see another scene where she finally says why she's mad at Erica Jane. And it's that Erica Jane, a couple of years back when Denise was on the show, was talking. It was like an outside party that she had. And they were at an adult table. And over there was like her teenage kids table. And she's like, come on. Everybody's had a threesome. And they're like, you've had a threesome? Well, I've been with, I don't know if it was a threesome. I've been with a couple. Well, that's three people, whatever. And she said, Denise said, you know, those were kids were there. I'm still annoyed that she talked about that, you know, when the children were around. Well, now one of those children is on OnlyFans. Good for her. Sammy Sheen. And she, with uh, whatever she does on OnlyFans, she's excited because she wasn't showing her naked breasts before, but now she got a boob job. And so TMZ reported on now her new OnlyFans content does include her new boobies naked. And Denise is on OnlyFans and they do stuff together. And so I just kind of thought if you're going to come back in and like hang your hat on one of the things that someone did that wronged you, Maybe it shouldn't be explicit sexual conversation, not appropriate for kids when now your kid is actually essentially a sex worker. In my opinion, I would have tried to get get it going, get some action going with somebody, something else. You know, you criticized my shoes two years ago, something else, in my opinion. Um, So then Kathy Hilton had another Christmas party in Beverly Hills that seemed to be, you know, Paris was there and a lot of close friends and everybody took photos and it's all out. And there is a great photo that Kathy just posted with Kathy and Kyle Richards 
and Morgan Wade. I'm going to make you love me. Well, I'm going to my pretty lady's sister's house, and we're going to see some Christmas decorations. I, I don't know. I've never been to Beverly Hills, but apparently it's where the fancy rich people live. She's wearing kind of a cool, like, suit and a velvet thing. And, you know, I... I told you that I saw her um, when I was in La Quinta a couple weeks ago, and she just had like a baseball hat, whatever, Morgan Wade. But when I first saw this person sitting there with all the tats, I thought it was Justin Bieber. I was like, holy shit, Justin Bieber's here. And then I realized, no, it's just Kyle's very good friend, Morgan Wade. Anyway, always fun, always fun to have a spotting. So the party seems like a fancy hit. Lots of stars were there. And um, also, I talked about, we talked about that Morgan Wade reminded us of Leather Tuscadero, which was a character played on the old show from the 70s, Happy Days. And um, I looked up Leather Tuscadero, and she really does look like Morgan Wade. Just like, put it, I'll put it on my Instagram, but side by side. Um, now, in also in the in this season, Sutton is at odds with Kyle. Sutton is saying to Kyle, like, Name them. Name them. She's like, what do you want me to name? I want you to name all the problems that you're having in your marriage. Why are you wearing a dis- different band, a different wedding band? What are you What are you in denial about, Kyle? What's really going on with the husband? Why are you not drinking and working out so much? Sounds like you might be hiding some issues. And, um... And someone brought up on Twitter or something interesting. They wrote, you know what's funny? This is, oh, the reality TV guru wrote this. You know what's funny? Sutton wants Kyle to tell you what's going on in her marriage and every detail about her life. Meanwhile, this is what? Her fourth year and we have zero clear why she got to why she got divorced and what led to it. And then I believe Kyle then reposted it on her stories. That is a good point. Um you know, we don't know a lot about Sutton's personal life. From when I interviewed her, it, her minor kids at the time, because of the divorce, which happens a lot with reality um, and Real Housewives, where the husband doesn't want the kids to be featured on the show. And if they're under 18, both parents have to decide. That's my understanding. So we don't see her kids at all in the show. That's one thing. And that's not Sutton's fault. Or maybe the kids don't want to. Also, they have every right not to do that. Um, but no, we really don't know what happened with the marriage. But also, why does she have to tell that? It's It happened before she was hired to be on the show. The marriage is, she's divorced. Um, I do think it was kind of great how Kyle was like, you bring up a lot of things, Sutton. You bring up a lot of things and you're just like clueless. I mean, last time you were complaining about how how hard it was to sell your one house in Bel Air and buy another in Bel Air. And she's like, okay, that was one, that was one that you named. What's another? And then Kyle's like, well, the other one was, you know, when you said it was that just because Dorit was held at gunpoint in her home, that that doesn't take away the fact that you have a lot of shit going on because your designer for your beret hats had trouble getting into LAX today. Well, that was a problem. He was supposed to come and be at one of my openings of my shop. So I'm sorry that I wasn't so involved in Dorit being held in her bedroom at gunpoint. Doesn't mean I didn't care. It meant I was concerned about my French designer getting into the country. Kyle. And um, so it is It is kind of funny. And I, I do like their dynamic. I think it's making for a good season. I like them both. I like them kind of going at each other and it's been fun. And Dorit was on Watch Rabbids Live and she did say to um, Andy Astra, how did you feel about when Garcelle said, the only time I've noticed jewelry is when Dorit still had hers after the robbery. And she's like, you know, you know, Andy, I really like Garcelle and that really cut deep. And I did think about texting her and being like, why did you say that? And then I said, you know what? I'm going to save it for the reunion. And that is being a good real housewife. Save it for the reunion. It'll be fresher. Oftentimes when I have friends come on the podcast 
and they start telling me something that I want to share on the show, I say, save it for the pod, save it for the pod, save it for the pod. Because the reaction to everything the first time you discuss something or share something will be better than if she and Garcelle have it out on text now and um, and then apologize and everything. By the time they get to the reunion, the feelings won't be so raw. And I do, and I've talked about it, and I do want to hear what she was referring to Garcelle. Was she just being funny and snarky? Was she fed a line by a producer, though she probably wouldn't reveal that? Or was there one particular earring or piece of jewelry or ring that that Dorit still had and that now Dorit could explain, well, I wasn't wearing it that night or or they didn't notice it or they were so only involved in going into the closet to get all the designer bags and the jewelry in my jewelry box and, I, and they didn't even see my ring or I turned it around and I was like that. I don't know. But that is what I would like to know. And they have not filmed the reunion yet. So that is coming up. Um, Tiffany Haddish came to the Kathy Hilton party. And I spoke to Tiffany Haddish at that other event where Peter was dressed so dapper um, that he's going to get swept off his feet by hopefully an, an, a great guy that could make my life better. Anyway, and I talked to her a little bit and I don't want to reveal too much, but she brought up a really interesting point about her incident that happened with her DUI. And she was driving... She has a self-driving Tesla. And we talked a little bit about it. I think it'll come out. But I am very curious how a self-driving Tesla sometimes could maybe park the wrong way or, or in the future keep you from getting a DUI or possibly cause you from getting Like, what are the series of events? And I think there's a lot more to her story and that might involve self-driving Teslas that um, that will really co- be an interesting thing to see when it comes to the, these kind of traffic situations. So, but she looked great. She was sweet. She was great. She's doing her thing. And so I'm curious to see what will come from that. And she was having fun with Kathy Hilton. This woman claims that her diamond ring is worth over 800000 It was stolen amid her stay at the Ritz Paris. I thought this was a weird article that people featured. And of course, it caught my eye, being that I've been accused of stealing, you know, jewelry for $10,000 that were worth 42 on Revolve. But also, I think it's really weird when you're, you know, when you're at a hotel and there's maid service and whatever, and you leave jewelry out. I actually did one time leave my real rings on a nightstand at a hotel and I was on the road and I realized when I got to the airport that I did not have them. I was so panicked and I immediately called the hotel and I don't remember which hotel it was. And I wish I could because they had, they went, they got them. They were safe. One thing I did say though, is I, when I called, I said, I left some costume jewelry. I did say this. I go, I left some costume jewelry by the nightstand in this room and It's really not expensive, but it has major sentimental value Um, if it was from a dead relative or whatever I was saying. Just in case, I was like, I don't know. Someone, you say, oh my God, I lost lost my $100,000 ring. Can you run up there and see? And then they're like, it's just not here. How would you even prove it? So I thought thought it was kind of interesting. And I really just don't know why why they were featuring, why this is such a big deal. But I guess because most people don't have things stolen – in hotel rooms. It's kind of strange, but maybe you do. I don't know. Okay. This was really nice. Uh, Someone noticed that there was a poster justice for juicy scoop that someone made themselves like put glitter and everything on it and um, put it on a sign, someone else's advertisement, which is not very nice to do, but it was on Ventura Boulevard somewhere near Encino. And before the haters come and say, isn't Heather's son's school in Encino? Didn't she make her son do this? And you might think that I did because I've told a story of how my parents had real estate bus benches and my dad made my sister and I scrub the graffiti and the dirt and the penises that were drawn on my mother's face um, off of them. And we did this as teenagers right in front of the boys' school. 
that was opposite of our school and they were screaming at us. And after that, I was like, I just, I can't, like, I know I'm part of this family business and I want you guys to have listings, but that was like cruel and unusual punishment. And my dad did not realize how bad it was until he read my book. But anyway, you'll never blue ball in this town again. I did not make Brandon do this. Whoever did this, though, I love you. This holiday season, hopefully you're going to be with some loved ones. Maybe you're hearing this story again from your grandmother and you're like, oh, I love hearing about how you came to America. And I bet you'd really would love to get those down in a document, those timeless stories. But it can be challenging to write an entire book of life memories. But with StoryWorth, make it fun and easy. This is how anyone can write a book about their life. I love this so much. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one one single life-related question that you pick from the collection, like what was the bravest thing you've ever done? What was the farthest you ever traveled? All they have to do is reply to the story. Then after a year, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories, memories, and even any photos into an exquisite hardcover book creating valued keepsakes. I mean, I wish I had this for when my parents were still on earth. They would have absolutely loved it. It would have absolutely been the gift I've given, I would give them in a hot second. So help your family share the story this holiday season with Story Worth. Go to storyworth.com slash juicy today and save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y worth w-o-r-t-h dot com slash juicy to save ten dollars on your first purchase storyworth.com slash juicy vanderpump rules the trailer is out i believe it airs january 30th and it's like a two and a half minute trailer and it looks really really juicy ariana maddox who of course um is going off now to be roxy hart in chicago she was on uh watch Rams live And of course, the question which a lot of people wondered is, are you still living in the same house that you own with Tom Sandoval, who cheated with your best friend, Raquel, for seven months while you thought you were a committed couple with him living under the same roof? And she said, yes, because we both still own the house and I would like to sell the house, but Tom does not. And we, we, because we own it equally. We both have to decide what to do with it, which could be very, very frustrating. She said most of the time that she worked on Dancing with the Stars, she was living in an Airbnb, probably because the studio and everything, she probably just got someplace closer to the studio, which is not in the Valley. I think it's a, well, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm imagining the one time I went where it was, but it's in the city, not the Valley. And So, and now she's going to go off to New York in January. So he's probably going to extend this for a longer time. And he's probably saying the market's down, you know, the rate interest rates are up. Let's just wait and see. So in the meantime, she says she doesn't spend a lot of time there, but they do still own it together. And people were excited about this trailer. It features Katie making out with a girl, which I'm not surprised by. Um, there's some romance, a little, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, there's also, it also gets revealed that at one time Sheena made out with Schwartz. I don't know if that was seven years ago or seven months ago when they were in Vegas. Uh, let's see who else. Lala says something that, you know, it's one line, but people are going off of it. She goes, I've never seen a woman who's been cheated on, who has become a God in reference to Ariana. And Ariana's enormous amount of success and love from the public, as well as all these different endorsements. And, you know, I, I look, I could imagine if all, everybody on the cast, though they love and support the um, amazing lemonade that Ariana has made out of this, I don't think anyone can compare it to. And thank goodness and thank God. And she's talented and great. But in a moment of being real, Maybe to some of the other cast members, it's a little bit like shit, you know, but I think they all did really well from the scandal. They all made merch. They all got notoriety. They The, the show has been nominated for an Emmy um, and they're, all, you know, they're all having to like hang out and still film together. And I think it looks really, really good. I think everyone's very, very excited for the season. So that is coming. Oh, and also Lala and Sheena released a holiday song. Always fun. 
Well, I saw a movie over the weekend called Leave the World Behind. It's on Netflix. It's with Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke and Kevin Bacon. And I reviewed it on Get Me Behind Gates on Patreon just for fun. Just a little extra treat for you guys. If you're part of that on my Patreon, it's heathermcdonald.net. You just go there, click on Patreon with my son because I was like, wait a minute. He's like, did you see this movie? I said, yes. And then I go, wait, before we talk about it, let's just record us talking about it because I need to talk about this movie. It The people are are... Most people are on my side and thought it was awful. I did see a few people say, no, you didn't get it. I liked it. But it was just about extremely wealthy people that go and get an Airbnb in one of the probably most expensive zip codes on the East Coast, which the house is probably like $20 million. And then the owners come and say, hi, we got to stay with you, even though we airbnb this to you for $2,000 for a long weekend and the house is worth like $20 million. And they're like, but I'll give you back the thousand if we can just all hang out together. And then it just goes on from there and it's very confusing and it's way too fucking long and it's so strange. And I couldn't, I wanted the world to end. It said, leave the world behind. I'm like, I actually want the world to end. Anyway, since then I did see a TikTok that explained some symbolism like this girl was like basically doing like a college paper on it like oh the little girl's wearing a nasa shirt and oh this ship has the name on it that means that like it doesn't matter it was just painful you'll never get those three hours back i cannot recommend that you don't watch it enough with your time that's all meanwhile TJ and Amy Robach are really milking this fun, loving, romantic relationship on the red carpet. And yet again, they went on the red carpet and then he saved that moment to just whisper in her ear. <laughs> you know, like like he had all these jokes to tell. And he's like, you know what? Just like Heather says, save it for the pod. I'm going to save it for the red carpet. Um, Amy, TJ, stop it. <laughs> Oh, my God. I cannot wait to make Peter whisper something silly in my ear when we're on the red carpet again. Now, we know that their exes are dating. Her name is Marilee, TJ Holmes' ex, and hers is Andrew Hsu, who was famous from the hit show many years ago called Melrose Place. And they are dating. Now, there is a little rumor that someone brought up. Not a rumor, a theory. A theory, and it's it's a fun one, kids. It's a fun. Of course, we all talked about Shania Twain because that happened to her. Looks like we made it. And then they didn't make it because her husband made it with her best friend. And then she got with the best friend's ex-husband. And she ended up with the ex-husband. And he never stayed with the best friend. And it all seemed to have worked out. Anyway. That can happen because they find comfort in that their ex has cheated on them. Or sometimes that's the way people find out they're cheating. They go like your husband's sleeping with the woman and then you go to the woman's husband and you're like, hey, um, can I talk to you for a minute? Can we meet at Starbucks? I have something interesting you might want to see. And then you have the screenshots of all the, you know, all the texting and whatever. And then the two of you are like motherfuckers. And then you try to come together, you know. And then maybe it gets romantic. Or what if you are swinging couples? Swinging couples that um, have a arrangement, which is usually rules for swingers are, you know, if we're going to swing, we, we're, we're never going to go off with the person alone. It's always going to be all together. And we switch and we swing and we have drinks and then we go back to our own spouses I don't think this is the case, but I think it's a really fun theory. I really just think he was a player. I think he had numerous affairs while on the job, one being Amy, and they really did fall in love while they were both married. But the fact that they could have been swingers <laughs> and then they went off by themselves secretly and then their spouses found out, but the spouses weren't strangers to each other and then they went off. I like it. I like it. And I hope that's the case. And I would love for everyone. And, and listen, if this podcast podcast ever gets a little dry and boring, maybe when they start covering like 
the election or something, that's when you go, all right, we're going to tell you the real truth. Our guest today, my ex-husband, Andrew Shu, and my ex-wife, Marilee. Hi, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, are we going to do this thing? Yeah, we're going to do this thing. Whoa. All right, let's talk about where we really all met and we really all started hanging out as couples. Okay, that's my fan fiction. Also, um, Kevin Coster was seen cozying up to Jewel. They People believe that they are dating. They were at uh, Necker Island, Richard Branson's island. And in this photo, she's got a mic. I don't know if she was singing or making an announcement because it was some type of charity event. But Kevin Coster has his hands around her waist. Of course, Jewel is a singer. She's a single mother. She's 49 years old. She has like a 14-year-old son. And he is 68. So that's a pretty, still a huge age difference. Two years shy of 70. I'm just saying, Jewel. Mm. But I mean, very rich and pretty cute still. So they say, our sources say the relationship is rather new, but it's, they're definitely a, a thing. So I kind of like that. Meanwhile, Cardi B has officially split from her husband Offset. First, they both start, stopped following each other. And then she, according to people, said, I've been single for a minute now. Um, I always think that's such an interesting expression. I remember when I first heard the minute expression like 20 years ago. Like, it's been a minute. And I was like, that's such a weird expression because a minute's really short. But it means actually a while. This. Um, you're like, Heather, I know it's been going on for 20 years. Whatever. I just thought maybe someone's listening and going, how did that expression start? And that is how. It's, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, so it's been more, it's been a few minutes. Let's just say that. And, and it has to do with infidelity. We don't know. But I just, I'm like, look, does this mean we're not going to see video of her opening up a fridge on Christmas morning with just stacks of cash from Offset? That she can be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, look at my man. I know this isn't a good impression, but oh, my God. Um, so my prediction is that Christmas will come and there'll be some big exp like Rolls Royce, Maybach. I don't know, whatever the most expensive thing is with custom interior design you know, solid gold wheel, uh, something, you know, something really subtle. And uh, and it'll be her showing her video that Offset got her this. And everybody in the comments will be like, girl, don't do it. You make your own coin. You make your own bag. And then other people will be like, that's a man who knows that he did you wrong and he's not going to do you wrong again. Take him for a spin. Give him a blowjob at the light on Ventura and... <laughs> And Belboa, where Heather's Juicy Scoop sign is, and just be be on with your bad self, girl. I don't know. That's what I my prediction. Wonka is the prequel to Willy Wonka to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I guess it's about a young Willy Wonka. And I always said, even when they did the Willy Wonka with um with uh, Johnny Depp. When they, that was the first remake from the original with Gene Wilder that we all saw when we were growing up. And I remember being at Chelsea lately and I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so great for little people because it's going to be a great movie that, that'll hire so many little people to do this remake because they're going to be the Oompa Loompas like they were in the original. And then they, say, then they said, no, we're going to just get this one guy who I don't even think legally was a little person. And they just duplicated him like a hundred times and had him running around in that one. And I was like, that is so fucked. Then they decide to do the Oompa Loompa and they, and, be, and they put him in the original Oompa Loompa outfit, like with the green wig. And it's, um, it's Hugh Grant. And kind of, he kind of, when they put the white eyebrows and give him an orange face, he has an Oompa Loompa type face. So he is kind of a good person to cast. And of course, an English accent, whatever. And, but it's just one of him. And I guess he's just, he's just featured by himself. And he's like in some little glass cage or something. I don't know. And anyway, he said he did not enjoy doing it. 
very much because it was like he had to be in some weird CGI outfit and it was uncomfortable. And then they're like, he's like, but I like the paycheck. That's why I do it. I like that. Lately, Hugh Grant in interviews has just been so like he's getting to that age where he just like does not give a fuck. And is like, why do you think I'm here for the paycheck? Why do you do your job, loser? Like, it reminded me of when Whoopi Goldberg once years ago on The View, literally 10 years ago, and she continued to be on The View. She was like, I do this job for the money. I, I check every time I want to quit this job. I just look at my paycheck and be like, girl, just sit back in your Crocs and make it happen because the, they'll never fire you and you could just be annoyed with people and they love you. So uh, anyway, I kind of like it. I don't know. Are we going to go see the Wonka movie? I don't know that I'll ever go to a movie theater again. I do like the movie theaters that serve you food and alcohol. But is there anything we want to see? Drake's here. I don't know. Drake. So by the way, so when I did the, the thing with Drake, my son, home from ASU, I what I'd like to do over the holidays with you, Drake, and I think it could be a fun little series, like I throw it up here or throw it up on Patreon. And we want, and I have you watch some of my juicy scoop history movies, like the juiciest movies from the 90s. We're going to watch those together. And then I am going to record your um, review. So it could be quite positive or it could be negative or a little both or whatever. And I'm going to, I'm going to put out my list of the juicy scoop movies that everyone can watch during the holidays. And, I'll I'll make like a special video. Let's do that. Write that down, Drakey Phil. Let's do that. Like my recommendations, and and you will love them. Um, speaking of acting, Kim Kardashian is doing another Ryan Murphy movie TV series where she's going to pay a, play a high powered lawyer. As you know, she was in the American Horror Story, and that's a Ryan Murphy thing. He like he likes to use actresses over and over again. And this one is going to be based on her own divorce attorney, Laura Wasser. So I think it's great. Listen to me, Kim. It took a long time to pass the baby bar. It's going to be a hard time to pass the bar. You don't have to be a real attorney. You can just play one on TV. You can just use your stature for the Innocence Project and, and things like that, which I think is so important to get people out of prison that have done their time or for us for a stupid crime or are actually innocent which is horrific so uh, let that's what i think i just think that we i won't bring it up again the fact that you never did really pass the bar i don't think that's anything to be ashamed of i say play lawyers on tv you use the, the law that you have to go have fun put on a nice skims suit go to court slick your hair back have those moments and then you can come home and like, you know, wear a tiny string bikini in your backyard and take a bunch of photos and still just have the best of both worlds. Not a problem. However, I guess Emma Stone mentioned somewhere that she's a big fan of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and All Housewives. And she would love to do the biopic of Jen Shaw, who is doing Seven years, I think, in federal prison for running that huge fake fraud and scheme where she would, you know, you know what she did. Took money from old people, made made people think that they could have a business, that a viable business. And they kept paying for courses and things like that. And then they never get their money back. And there were all these victims. And she did it for many, many years. And she's in prison for seven years. And her lawyer is said, oh, she's so excited but she really wants Kim Kardashian to play her in her, her movie about her life. And I actually think that's a great idea um, because people would watch it if it was Kim. But I, I would love to see this movie. I've always said, I think they're, I mean, if White Chicks ever got remade, I think it would be such a funny movie. Um, I think it would be such a great thing if it involved a re the crime being a because remember they were the white chicks characters, um, Sean and Marlon were FBI agents trying to solve a crime that was happening with socialites in the Hamptons that were supposed to be like Paris and Nikki Hilton. So now that they're older, it would be 
trying to solve a crime that involves real housewives. I mean, you're welcome. And, um, but I think a really, she could, she could be a good actor. She kind of looks like her. She certainly could look like her. But to have someone really go and like imitate Jen Shaw and have those acting chops where she throws the glass and acts so strange. And I'm so glad that I never was a fan of her behavior on the show, even the first scene. I was never, I never thought she was shamazing or anything like that. But, Yes, make the movie. Ask me if, you, if you'd like me to consult or join the writer's room. Call me up. I would love to. Unwrap the first of many presents this season with Holidays on the House from DraftKings Casino. With hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. Right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. You can try all the classics like slots, blackjack, and roulette. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code JUICYSCOOP and play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code JUICYSCOOP only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsible, 21 and above, physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, only void in Ontario. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. One opt-in in new customer, $5 wage required, max 100 in casino credit awarded, which require one-time playthrough within seven days. Terms at casino.draftkings.com slash holidays on the house. Restrictions apply. Everybody wants to get away, but what about your hair? Maybe it's time that hair gets away too. And by way, I mean, come on, fill your sleigh with the gifts from way because their best selling hair and body products are the best gifts for effortless routines. Perfect for you and everyone on your list this season. I've talked about the hair oil. I absolutely love it. I actually like look forward to washing my hair. Well, first I love to use their detox shampoo because I use a lot of products in my hair and I go a few days without washing it. And then this really just helps detox my hair. And then I use their leave-in knotty conditioner that helps with the frizz and the tangles and the uh, flyaways. And then I love that hair oil. It is just such a fast fix to make your ha- hair feel healthy and helps with split ends. So go to theway.com for 15% off site-wide when you enter the promo code JUICY. Don't miss your chance to get away this holiday season. Go to theway.com for 15% off site-wide when you enter the promo code JUICY. That's dot com for 15% off with the code JUICY. Reality Reckoning, the most Never has a movement had less momentum in Hollywood, but it is still being talked about, though nothing is happening. Bethany Frankel is on Nightline Impact, which you can watch on Hulu. I've only seen little clips, but she's being interviewed saying, you know, and they're like, oh, but what about Andy Cohen made you a star? And here you are. And she's like, Andy Cohen made himself a star on the backs of women wearing Gucci shoes. Like, I don't know. I was like, okay, it's a little dramatic on the backs of women, but okay, fine. And um, anyway, I just, (laughs) someone sent me or posted this photo of when Bethany had her own reality show of when she was getting married, Bethany getting married. She was already very pregnant with her daughter, who's now 13. So this was a long time ago and she couldn't get out of a dress and she had to have two people help put a bucket under her and pee. And of course it got all on camera And someone wrote, wonder if these employees were taken care of. Did they have mental help? Did they? And then the argument would be, no, they didn't. But Bethany was 13 years younger. And now she has a better perspective on how people should be treated. And there should be a union and all this stuff, which is fine. Like, I kind of I agree with, too. Oh, when I mentioned that Leah, who was also part of this um, reality reckoning, Leah, Nene Leaks. However, Nene Leaks has removed off her grid her, her photo with Bethany where they did Bethany's podcast. Who knows why? You know, is she making good with Bravo again? Is she going to come back to Real Housewives of Atlanta? I mean, how amazing would it be if Nene and Kim and Corey with all their financial problems and her leaving Croy or getting back with Corey, if she went back on Real Housewives of Atlanta? Amazing. Anyway, 
Leah was, I, there was a photo of Leah saying, I like it from behind from her OnlyFans. And I thought she was naked, but someone clarified. And I said, please clarify. And they did that. She's wearing like a one piece unitard, like a leotard or a bathing suit, a one piece. So it looked like she was naked, but it was just like a very low back with like a G string up the back. Like it fucking matters. It still was weird. Anyway, you know, because she can't be exploited by Bravo anymore. She's doing her own thing on OnlyFans as a single mother, Leah. So good, good for her. This wedding, you probably saw all about it. It was a $56 million wedding for this girl. Her dad owns many Mercedes Benz dealerships all over the country and in Florida. And it was all over TikTok. Everyone posted. She posted about it. She she was becoming, you know, a TikTok sensation, much like Sophia Ritchie kind of launched her TikTok and influencer lifestyle when she got married. And um, it was very lavish. It was like, oh, my God, all these days at the Versailles and, you know, putting people up and millions of flowers and three different dresses. And now her husband is looking at 25 years. He um, was in Texas. This happened back in March. And he had a gun and he was attempting to shoot at police officers is how I understand it. So that happened. Then he got married. And now he's facing this uh, case. And let me just read exactly what he did. He, um, let me see. Well, his name is Legron. That is her husband. They're young. They're in their 20s. But um, what he did was the indictment alleges that he posed a threat of bodily harm and used a firearm during the assault. If convicted, Legron could potentially face life in prison. Now, the wife did not attend his recent court hearing, but he has been offered a plea deal for a 25-year sentence in exchange for pleading guilty. Well, if you have $56 million to spend on your daughter's wedding, you're going to have the best attorneys try to fight this, community service, whatever the case might be, why he acted this way, how they could justify it, do whatever it takes so that he doesn't have to do that kind of time. But now that he's facing all this and this is all out, she has dropped her, uh, she deleted her TikTok account. I think same with her Instagram. She made that page private. But I mean, the whole the whole thing, Maroon 5 performed. I mean, it was just this really lavish thing. I'm sure they picked up everybody's outfits and everybody's rooms and all this stuff. But I'm like, so you knew this happened in March. And then you're just like, by the way, Dad, um, the wedding for my husband and I to be, I know we've gone a little overboard, but you know how I love pink roses. Anyway, I know it's $56 million, but he... Had a little snafu back in March, but conveniently, he does not have to um, deal with it until after the wedding. So let's go forward. Like, is there is it possible that the dad of the bride didn't know that this happened because there is or didn't know the severity of it? Because I, there is no way in hell that I would go through with even a small. I would encourage my daughter, even with a small wedding Let's not do this, but certainly $56 million. Really? I know it's all planned. So it must have all been planned for like a year. Then he has this weird moment where just like, was he like, they're probably going to just say he was like mentally off or something. I don't know. Insane. Okay. Matt Reif, the comedian. You're like, Heather, we know he got jaw filler and new teeth. There's more to the story. So this is pretty interesting. There is this very famous TikToker named Bunny, and she's a mom. And she has a connection to Bethany Frankel because she, as she was rising up in her her fun content and becoming famous on Instagram and TikTok, um, somehow she got connected with Bethany Frankel. And Bethany Frankel was going to pitch a show about, you know, Miami moms or she and her younger group of friends or something. And and they signed contracts and Bethany was going to be the EP of this reality show about this woman. And they had a falling out. 
I'm just saying it as I'm telling you, as I can remember, remember there's lots to the story. Bunny, come on, Juicy Scoop, tell it. But from what I recall is um, it, while it was like in limbo, Bunny wanted to do other things. And the contract that Bethany presented had such strict, conf- you know, such strict bylaws or confer, you know, they were so she couldn't do anything else. And so she was like, I want out of this. I don't want to even do this anymore. And this isn't even what the show that I wanted. So the, somehow the deal breaks, but Bethany had still trademarked the name of the show that they like were going to do together called like Momster Moms or Momsters, like Mean Moms. I don't know what, but of course it was probably presented to. Bonnie, Bunny is like, oh, we're going to feature you and your entrepreneurial millennial moms doing wonderful things, you know, being boss babes and doing charity work when in fact it's like, no, we're actually going to call you momsters like you're a monster. Anyway, they had a falling out. There was a cease and desist sent to Bunny and she has continued to strive on TikTok and she has a young son and he um, loves like loves talking about space and planets and he's like one of those little kids that's like a like some kids are obsessed with dinosaurs and he has all these like like strong facts and he's adorable and there was a a bit of matt that matt rife did talking about space and planets or something and it's my understanding that so that she matched it or something with her son correcting his stand-up that no this particular planet has this many rings something like that it was cute it was not like Matt, I guess, sees it and like gets pissed <laughs> at the little kid who's like seven or oh, six and goes, you know, and writes a response that's like, oh, really? You know, hey, you little kid or whatever. Um, tell that to your mom who makes her money off of OnlyFans. So then Bunny is like, I'm not an OnlyFans person. No shame to the only fans people out there do what you want but that's not how i make my money i don't buy my followers and then she was being kind of snarky she's like i didn't buy my i don't you know didn't buy my looks i don't have that so it's just so they're like i can't believe that matt rife has is actually trolling like a six-year-old now the other side of this is you see these things coming at you and He sees that a little kid was correcting his stand up and whatever. What he did was wrong. But I'm like, sometimes you just don't know where this all started. Who actually put the video together? Who took the things, two things together? Was it her? Was it a a fan of them both? Was it obviously innocent? Like, it's just a good lesson as someone gets up in the ranks of being famous to just like, And listen, you know, I've been guilty of not taking a breath, but like taking a breath and really seeing like, do I want, I really want to say this. I really want to comment this. I really want to respond to this. Fuck these people. Uh, You know, he's had, in his opinion, he's like, I've had a shitty three weeks. So he's trying to act like it doesn't matter. And this was just another one. But, you know, he's probably a home alone on his bed with his phone. And next thing you know, now this is a whole nother thing. I mean, you know how people have like sober coach, sober coaches, which is happening a lot more now because people realize, oh, you have to go to rehab 21 times. We have to leave your family and your pets and everything to go be with a bunch of people you don't know and like scrub a toilet that that's going to humble you. And then hopefully you become sober on the 20th time or for 40,000 a month, maybe you just hire, hire a sober coach and maybe that person teaches you how to be around other people that drink, you know, keep your day busy, just try to, because once you get out of the rehab, you're going to have to deal with that anyway. So maybe try now. There's different ways to do things. Maybe certain stars that don't want to give up their phone or don't want to give up their time on social media. Maybe they're like, I need a social media coach. I need someone that's with me all the time that is going to monitor anytime I look at it. We're going to have to look at it together. Like, you know how like back in the day you do um, driving and the, you take the, the, the go to like driving school and the guy has the brakes on the other side. Like maybe there's something where somebody else 
can have your phone or maybe you don't have to be together. Oh my God. I just thought of an amazing idea. So when you're like, listen, I don't trust myself. I'm going through some shit. I've got some haters and I, I just, just give me, I need a little help. They go, okay, this is your social media. Mir- We're going to get the mirrored phone to somebody else and anything you want to write or do, you can do in the moment so you can feel it, the power of it, but it's going to have to be checked through somebody else to either say yes, no, or we're going to edit it. And then you feel like, I don't need this weird person sitting next to me all the time, but I do need someone to like check me because this guy, this is just is not good. And he's got to, he's really got to take a break. This mom is charging $200 per Christmas dinner because she's like, I'm not having all these people come over. And me cook everything and spend all this money and the time. I'm going to treat it like a nice restaurant where you have, I'm going to ch- charge each person $200 a plate, like a, like what I'd get charged like to have a wedding. Anyway, not a terrible idea. <laughs> you know what? It's not a terrible idea if you're doing it like every year and the people coming can, you know, they're, they're a table of, they're a family of six. And they come and they bring, you know, one little thing of cookies and one bottle of shard. And you're like, honey, I love your family. They're really fun, but we're not rolling in it. And I really want to make it nice. And I added it up and it's going to cost us like $2,000 by the time we're done with everything, along with all the hours of work that I'm doing. So, you know, what would make it more fun and more exciting for me is if when these people come over, they drop a grand. (laughs) I think very few people would agree. I think anybody else would be like, well, then let's get fucking go to the Four Seasons. Like if we're going to spend $200, I would just rather be with my own immediate family and go to a beautiful restaurant. So I think it's a fun discussion to have. I would like to know what you guys think of that situation. A study shows that the youngest siblings tend to think they are the funniest in the family. Um, this is a real study and I totally believe it's true. Um, I've mentioned it before that in some of the writer's rooms I've been in, we've, we realized on a couple different shows that the majority of us were the youngest of large families, or at least we were like the third down, like barely anybody that's a comedy writer or a stand up is a firstborn. It just, is just kind of a rare, it's more that... You were like the afterthought. You were the one that was exposed to things that were completely inappropriate by your older brothers and sisters. And then you were sitting around and observing like older kids playing. So you have a different experience than a birth order of a firstborn. That's like the parents are totally on them and they're strict with them and everything. Those people usually, I think only two presidents in the history of um, America were not firstborn males. So, but a lot of comedians are the youngest of big families, much like myself. So I thought that was a good study. Um, Oprah's really skinny, you guys. Just deal with it. She's really, really skinny. And she did one of those f- like fake laughs as if as if someone taking the photos of Oprah like just got her in a laugh. Like, ha! Ah! But I've done it too. And it's really flattering because then you lift up your neck and you don't get the wrinkles in your neck and you put your body out and your body even looks skinnier. And it's really hard sometimes with pe- everyone being on these Ozempic drugs. It's hard for the people that were always like a size six and life came pretty easy to them. And it was like the one thing in their life that wasn't a challenge was kind of staying like around that size six size and always looking good. And now all their friends that didn't have it so easy are now like a size two or four. Those people do not like this. And they try to say, I don't like it. You know, I don't, it's not, you'll see, you'll see when your bowels explode and come out your nostrils. Okay, I don't know. But she's skinny. She's acting like it's just, you know, walking around Montecito and running into Meghan Markle and laying off the scones during the holiday. But um, she looks really good in this purple dress. And listen, The world is ending clearly based on the shitty movie I saw this weekend. So why not be skinny if that makes you happy? Let it be. Um, 
Joe Manganiello, who was married to Sophia Ritchie, has a new girlfriend, and they made the red carpet debut at this event, um, the Arme- Children of Armenian Fund Gala, and he looks like very different. I don't know. I think maybe he like lost his beard or it's gray or something. Oh, it's a gray beard. I don't know. He looks kind of weird in this picture. Anyway, the girl's hot and that's a hot new couple alert. Will Smith, according to Jada, she said the thing that saved her marriage was the slap that happened at the Oscars. She up until that point, she they were living separately and she was like dying to divorce him. And then that whole thing happened where he slapped Chris Rock. And then she's like, that's what I knew. I'm never going to leave this man. I've talked about her narcissism at a nauseum. And, um, oh, I just saw this other thing about narcissistic people. One of the things that was in the book, in her book, was about one, um, they, she and Will had sex. And right after the sex, Will said um, that she said, um, that she was like, I'm pregnant. I know I'm pregnant. I know I'm pregnant. I know I, I could feel it. I'm pregnant. Da, da, da. And he's like, what? How would you know that already? And she's like, I knew that. And then she, it seems like maybe she really was because they did the timeline. And then I think Jaden was born. And he said, this guy said, you know, with narcissists, they want you to believe they have like superpowers. And they're like very big on like, and I just want to say, I do a lot of predictions on this show and it's all in good fun. And a lot of them are true, but a lot of them are fake. And I just want you to, I just want you guys to know, I don't really think I'm psychic and I don't want anyone thinking I'm a narcissist like Jada Pinkett. Anyway, he was out at, um, in Miami at Art Basel and he is with this girl that looks a lot like Jada hanging out. She's got a shaved head and she's pretty and she's wearing like this little great, but you know what? Who knows? I would, God, I would love it if you, if they just could be happy on their own and not be suffering. Um, let's see. Oh, the Air May Air plans to share half of his $12 billion wealth with his gardener. He's 80. The gardener's 52. He's already left him lots of property and he plans on leaving him more. And, um, you know, he, he's had issues with other people in his family. The 80-year-old man has never been married and never had kids. But the gardener really knows how to prune his rose bush just the way he likes. And they are um, so interesting, you know. I remember there was a female um, talk. I, I Oh, I don't remember. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, if this is, but I remember when I was at Chelsea lately and Queen Latifah, is Queen Latifah out? I think she's out, right? Can you just look it up? Just look up Queen Latifah. He doesn't know who Queen Latifah is. Dana White, she's an actress. Queen Latifah had a talk show and I was like, when is this girl just going to be honest? Because what I remember is that she had a female personal trainer that she was very close, close to and either she bought her a house or put her on the title of the house. And I was like, hmm, that's someone that you really trust knows how to spot you when you're at the gym. If you're going to put them on the title of your home. And so there was always like rumors about her. And does it say that she's out? Like yes. I think so. I well, that's thanks for the research. She said, <laughs> I, th- I think so. Whatever the point is, be a little suspicious when somebody. Actually, yes. Okay, she's out. Thank God. Is she still with her personal trainer that she bought the house for? Is it Ebony? I don't know, but oh, yeah. Remember Will Smith? Ebony, Will Smith bought his uh, good friend. Look up Will Smith buying his good friend a, a car. That was always a big rumor too that he bought like a Bentley. For his best friend. But then people said no. He did it because the show that he and Jada were producing, the the guy was in. And that was his present for being on this UPN show or WB show. Dwayne Martin. He bought Dwayne Martin like a, a Rolls Royce. 
luckily, um, I, I don't need to, <laughs> I don't have any friends. I don't need to buy anybody anything anymore. Okay. Um, Alexis Bellino it has spent a lovely weekend with John Jansen. They were out and about. They were on his boat. And she was doing some Instagram of it, but she didn't take any photos with him. But we know the boat. The boat's been featured on Real Housewives of OC. We know the pillows that John Jansen has on his little boat. And then I was scrolling through TikTok and someone actually was like at the yacht club and saw them hanging out. So they are for sure on and dating. And it is just a real interesting twist. That we are going to see. I mean, who knows what, what, how long this will last. But even if they don't last very long and she, and this secures her spot on the show, which has not been confirmed, even if they're done three weeks from now, the fact that she dated him for even a little bit and then gets on the cast with Shannon Bedore will be very interesting to watch the aftermath at that with all the ladies, you know, running around Newport talking about this guy and his boat. Anyway, um, May, December was another movie I told you guys I was so excited to watch. And what a disappointment. It took me three days to get through it. It's on Netflix. Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore has won a million awards because it's like, like it's got this weird music and stuff. And I told you what it's about. It's, it's based on the story of Mary Kay Letourneau, who was a married 38-year-old woman who was a teacher and she met uh, one of her students who was in her art class and they started, well, she started grooming him and having sex with him when he was like, I think it started when he was like a, maybe 13, started when he was 13. She got pregnant with his child. It all got exposed. She went to prison for just a little bit, had the baby. But they said, if you if you ever have any contact again with him, you know, since he's now only like 14 or 15, then you're going back. You're going to do all the time, which is seven years. They found her in a car with him having sex. She had to go to prison, found out she was pregnant again, had a second daughter, did seven years in prison. Why he and the and his mom raised the two girls. She comes out, Mary Kay. They get married and they continue to raise the kids. She's like, in her, she, uh, you know, then they did this interview and she was like in her f- early 50s, still very attractive. He's like 35. The girls are like in their late teens. And she has this moment in this interview. That's really what this movie is kind of based off of where they're doing an interview with someone and, and they're like, but you, you know, he was only 13 when this started. And she's like, who's the boss? Who is the boss? And she keeps looking at um, Villa, Villa, Villa. His name's, I forgot his name. The guy's boy's name. Well, he's not a boy. He was a man at the time. And he's like, what are you talking about? She's like, who is the boss? Who is the boss? You seduced me. You seduced me. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? And finally, he's like, I was the boss. And the interviewer's like, but he was 13 and you were, a 38-year-old mother of four. And she's like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's the way it was. I had no control over what this seventh grader did to me. I mean, it was just like, I, they were made for TV movies. They continued. One time when I was, they lived in Seattle. One time when I was doing a show in Seattle, doing stand-up, there, he, he became a DJ. He was also a tattoo artist. And it was like, it's hot for teacher night with Mary Kay and whatever his name can you look up mary Kay's husband's name if you cannot find this i'm gonna fucking kill you mary Kay letourneau <laughs> anyway um like and she showed and the poster was of her in like a sexy schoolgirl outfit and then he was the dj and people and they were still getting paid to like have a vow renewal or do interviews or whatever because they needed the money well in this movie yes how do you pronounce the name? No, the second one, the kid. Okay, the second one is uh, Vili. Vili. V-I-L-I. Anyway, that's why I can't pronounce it. So in this movie, it's about, and then and then she got cancer in real life and passed away. 
But Julianne Moore plays the Mary Kay Letourneau lady, like a version of it. And Natalie Portman comes to study her because she's going to play her in a movie. And once again, just like the um, end of the world movie with Julia Roberts, they live in this gorgeous home right on the water. Okay. I don't care where you live in America. If you are on the water, your property is worth a lot. And that is like the ultimate privilege. They're living there. He works as like an x-ray t- a technician and she bakes cakes that nobody buys. And they're living in this fabulous house and they never explain how they live. Like, like I just needed one explanation of like, well, my dad was wealthy and he left this to me or something. And that, you know, she's raising her daughters and everyone on this town is like totally okay with them being a couple and whatever. It could have been so much better, but it was weird and this weird music. And then Natalie, so this is a big spoiler alert, okay? Because it's at the end of the show. So if you really want to run to go see it. So then Natalie Portman, she's coming around and she's trying to talk the way that um, Julia Roberts is talking. But she's like, yes, okay. And then Julia Roberts is like one of those awful mothers when the daughter's trying on her graduation dress. She's like, oh, I love that you're so brave to show your arms. I I wouldn't be. I would never be comfortable if my arms look like that to show them, but you're such a brave daughter of mine. And then the girl like goes back and gets a different dress where it has big puffy sleeves. And she's like, hmm, whatever makes you comfortable, dear. It was just really like crazy. And the, you know, the ex-husband's like friendly. Like it was just, I'm like, okay, get to it. And then Natalie Portman, who's like engaged and talking to her, boyfriend she starts to deal with the guy i'm just going to call him billy billy she starts dating dealing with billy and they have a moment and they have sex and it's like the worst sex ever it like lasts one second and um and then that's it like that's basically then the next scene is her filming the movie and she he's like oh well we did that and she's like yeah that like it did nothing for Natalie Portman's acting or anything. That just that was the sex. And I was like, at one point, I thought she was going to have sex with Julia Julianne Moore. Anyway, I'm just like, what is up? And then the Golden Globes come out nominations, and like literally, there's nothing that I've seen or care about. And I'm just, I just don't understand why everything is so shitty. And that is why I'm going to put out my list of juicy scoop movies for the holidays, and we will do reviews. And I'm just going to. Enjoy watching the movies that I love that are actually, even though I know the twist because I've seen them before, I am so sick of watching these crappy movies and nothing happens in them. It sucks. Oh, so this this girl, um, what is her name? Olivia. This has like over 800,000 likes. She tells a story. Wild all girls Catholic high school scandal storyline. So I'm like, whoa. This is what I want to hear. And she starts to tell the story. And I'm like, oh, I know what this story is going to be. I went to an all-girl Catholic high school. We had this kind of hip young teacher. And everyone liked him. And he would say, hey, you guys can come into my class. And you can work on anime stuff and listen to music or whatever. And then one day they got an email saying, Mr. Jones is gone. And everyone kind of wondered, why is Mr. Jones gone? I wonder what happened. And then one day, a couple months later, she's in Starbucks line and the car behind her is Mr. Jones. And she is about to go and say, oh, hi, Mr. Jones, miss you. You know, don't know what happened. And in the driver's seat is a girl wearing the uniform and he is dating someone that still goes to the all-girl high school. I mean, I have some good scandals like that. We had some good rumor stories, but... One of the things that really did happen was um, there was a drama teacher. Listen up, Drake. It's a good one. There was a drama teacher and she was married to her husband. And they're like, we're going to do this big production. So I'm going to bring in my husband because he is like an art director or whatever. And meanwhile, this girl who was just graduated from high school, she was going to be the assistant director. And her name, we'll just call her Kelly. And 
we would take all we I remember we were always practicing all day long to do Peter Pan and the art director and the 19 year old who now goes to the community college and lives with the two of them is constantly getting massages and everything they're giving each other massages and massage and like and like you know practically doing the splits as they get the massage just like really like behind each other just really just getting into just this is theater you guys it's theater it's let's do it and um and i'm like this is fucking weird and many many years later i was like something's going on with those two we do the peter pan everything she eventually leaves the school i never really know what is going on years later I am at an open house doing real estate with my parents and she had long red hair and in walks she and this little girl who's about six who also had long red hair. And I'm like, oh my God, hi, how are you? And she's like, oh, great. I'm like, are you looking for yourself? Maybe. Um, I go, who's this? She's like, oh, this is, you know, Sarah B or whatever. This is Art's daughter. Art was the husband. So, yeah, they were together. They were a full family. And it all started during that production. But she was out of the school and she was over 18. But there were always like rumors about, you know, some of these male teachers. But that that one was like a real juicy one that I got to. So that's what it reminded me of. And then this girl, people is saying, um, this is a pretty amazing thing. This L.A. mom finally brought the teacher who sexually abused her to justice 20 years later. 20 years later, she was this was in Arizona and she looking back, she was a single mom. She finally went to therapy and she finally said, well, I think my issue started when um, I had this teacher that. I kind of started to date when I was 14. And the psychiatrist is like, wait, what? You kind of no, you didn't date this. This is completely wrong. Tell the whole story. And she's like, well, he was like, first he said he was 30 and he was that young, hip male teacher. And then, um, you know, we started, he started to, you know, make moves on me. And we were, I, my parents were like not paying attention to me. And I had this freedom and I had my own car and I could drive and meet him and everything. And then she started to kind of realize how fucked up it was. And then she realized that he lied and he was really 34. And she's like, ew. So she broke it off with him and of course it affected her whole life and so when she finally came forward the psychiatrist is like you need to bring this to justice she had all the receipts the notes the emails from aol the the love notes the lingerie the photos of them together like one time they went to disneyland and she told her parents she was going with a friend and she actually had a photo of them like kind of in like a romantic stance in disneyland together which she was under 18 so she had all this evidence and she called him on the phone and got him to, you know, say, oh, I'm sorry or admit to it. But he was still like not really sorry, but he basically admitted to it. They had all that evidence and he was convicted and now he's doing 66 years. So good for her. Um, oh, this is this has emerged. Sorry to leave the gross stuff at the end of the show, but that's why it's at the end of the show. Mackenzie Phillips. I actually wrote about this book in my book, which is. I can't remember which book it was, either My Inappropriate Life or You'll Never Blue Ball in the Town Again, because it was the, the juiciest book I'd ever read in my life. Mackenzie Phillips was on One Day at a Time, and her dad was John Phillips, and he was like in the Mamas and the Papas. So she grew up in a Hollywood family. There were drugs all around. She had a big problem with drugs and alcohol, a heroin addict, whatever. But the, she, of course, because she was an nepotism baby, got cast in this show one at a time that was a big hit about a single mother and her two daughters and she played one of the daughters and at some point she starts performing with her dad and one night and it's all in the book one night they're high they're doing drugs together and he just starts to make out with her and they start to have now she is over well over 18 she's like in her 20s and she's married and they start going on the road together and they are having a consensual sexual relationship at that point it's consensual because she is of age oh my god but then it's like we're high whatever so she's in the book i could not believe it i just it was just the most shocking book i'll, I'll bring it up all the time but now it's in the news again because i think she has a podcast 
and or her sister does. And they talked about it there. And the, the one sister stuck by her. A lot of other people in the family were like, I think you're crazy. You were a drug addict. Why are you talking about this like our dad? And then eventually she had a pregnancy scare um, or she she was pregnant. And she didn't know if it was her dad's baby or her husband's baby. And so she terminated that pregnancy. And that's when she broke up with her dad. Crazy, crazy. Well, guys... <laughs> To end on that note, the, sco- the show is called Juicy Scoop, and sometimes it can get a little dark and juicy. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being part of Patreon. You go to um, heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon. There's some uh, new fun merch like the Juicy Scoops hoop shirt and so many other fun things, new expressions that I'm coming up with. Thank you for um, commenting and giving me ideas for those expressions. And of course, have a great week. I have so many fun shows coming up, filling up the rest of December for you. And I appreciate it. Enjoy.